Okay, this is Russell Scott from scottcarvings.com and what I'm going to do is just a very simple carving uh, from a piece of piece of bark here. This is going to be a standing Santa head. So what I was thinking was creating a video like this because this is a larger head and so every time I keep talking about uh, faces and eyes and all that here, now we got a larger version of it so you can see how it works and I'm using this kind of a little bit as a go by here. No, not really, but just to show you that. So what I want to do is I want to get my glove on. And what I want to do is I want to put my family glove on because uh, this is a, this is a um, very dirty piece of bark here. And uh, while we're at it, maybe I should have set myself up here before. I got started, but there you are. Okay, now, so what we're gonna do is uh, begin. I wanna, first of all, I was gonna take a lot of the, um, the top of the bark off. And the job for that is this little, um, it's this, uh, um, um, what do you call it, a uh, steak knife or something. It's non serrated. And that's what I use for taking the bark off, the, uh, the top of the bark off, because I don't want to ruin my my good tools. And I'm going to have to, when it gets to the side, I'm going to have to use it, one of my good tools. But spend a lot of time getting a lot of this off, off in here. Let me just make sure I'm still in. Uh, where I'm at right now, you see concrete walkway. I'm in there. the Bimbles uh, Octagon's Sunrise Hotel, in which uh, right down the hill is Bimbles Octagon, and we're going to be eating our pizza there shortly, so I thought I'd at least get started and, and so on. Since this is going to get a little harder, I can take as much off as I can before I start using another tool that usually I don't use taking bark off, taking the external part off. Now it depends on where you get your bark. Uh, my bark is from uh, Minnesota and sometimes it can get a little stiff. And uh, it's better than Montana. Montana will come off a lot easier, I think, I believe. I haven't had Montana in a long time. And, uh, matter of fact, let's take the, my tools. As I said, I probably should have set up a little better. Um, here is my pencil and sharp pencil and here's I'm not going to use the others I can only use this is my number five uh, probably about 25 millimeter that I use a lot of and I'm going to take I'm going to use my I call it cuticle glove in other words uh, usually when I use my my chisels I would uh, kind of slip and hurt my fingers but now let's... this is so difficult that I'm making my other tool tools rattle there am I still in And all this stuff does feel much like concrete, but I'll tell you, it's uh, really beautiful when you get down there. Because I definitely want most all of this cleared out before I start using my knife. So at least it's one chisel I'm going to have to... Now this thing has some... 
can see the bugs. Bugs were once in there. And away we go. Let's come down this way a little bit. And I think what I'm going to have to do is, as I as I start carving the face in, I'll change things. I probably take the chisel and, and bring some more out. I want some of this up. Be careful of this here. Make sure that doesn't break off. Okay, now we got it started. Now, uh, the funny thing is, is that if you look straight on in this bark, and usually that's the issue that I have here, is that uh, the only pencil I got available is this pencil here. And we want to go in the center. Where is my ruler? I think the ruler will help. The ruler says that is a good about four inches wide therefore see the two where the two is let me see you gotta i'll line that up to me here i know it's probably off from where you're at and there is the center between the two and so this is where the face is going to be now i could be a little creative and put the face over a little bit he's looking that way but I just want this to be a simple one, a simple carving first. I'll be a little more artistic on the next one. Then again, let's get my chisel and take a good chunk of that out of there. Watch the finger. Despite yeah, the old punky glove, still. Probably not as reliable. Oh, what's this little anomaly there? Okay, it's gone. So we kind of feed that out a little bit. Now I'm going to take a little more of this off. I think when we get into carving the face, a lot of that will disappear. Now, usually what I do. When I do a, no matter what the size is, okay, this is, see how nice and smooth that is. That's beautiful wood right there, but when it's hard like that, that means we're still close to the surface, and we're going to have some problems on the other end with that. Okay, now take pencil, and since this is Santa, he's going to have a beard, he's going to have a hat. So usually, <clears throat> between these two spots here, about in the center, that's where the eye line is going to be. And you'll see why. I got it so. And then the nose will be about here. See, the reason why is because we still want to have this. Uh, and this is probably going to be raised. The Santa hat and then the little ball right here. And then we still want enough for the beard. And we still like to have, have a nice nice large nose there so let's get get in there take this glove off now use this knife get into this is the nose start taking the nose off or not nose off underneath the nose I'm sorry As I said, I've got this uh, bark from uh, here in Minnesota. Uh, this particular piece of bark has a story. Um, I was in a, for me, I was in a, a, the, a park that is actually suburban to Minneapolis, St. Paul, where I'm from. And 
and I was there and uh, had my camera doing all kinds of photography and of course there's a lot of kids and other people and I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right about let's see there's the where's the eye line well that's the eye line so I'm gonna right about here that's where the hat is going to be. I want to make sure. And uh, there was a part of the trail that uh, they had the yellow tape and and uh, found out that I uh, went about 100 yards in that there was a a, uh, a bridge that was out of order because of the little brook that had, was uh, turned into a big raging river at that you know probably about a month ago during the spring and um, and I looked down and right where that uh, usually what happens when there's a lot of water they kind of make kind of coagulate or whatever you want to call it uh, in one area and then that's where all the trees branches and all kinds of things debris and junk and garbage would collect and I looked down there and lo and behold there's a nice pieces of bark so I went down there and got some and I got a little a little tired by that time when all the way this is near the end of of the day and so I only got a bag's worth went to the car came back and and there's uh kids and adults and because it's a family kind of a thing and so the next so, so during the next week I thought I'm gonna go back and get some more I left some behind but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and down this dry river semi dry river or creek rather and I'm gonna see if I can find the mother low to see where this is all coming from and sure enough the next week I went out there Let's put the eye line back in, about here-ish. So he's got a good nose. And uh, let me, uh, as I say, this is how I've carved my other Santas, especially this one here. I did a little video on this too. Is what I like to do is I like to do um, a little bit of chip carving. And then use the the round chisels. Round chisels. Uh, it's easier to get it started and kind of putting the head in and putting the face in and so you can figure out what other things go. And here's like the eyeball would be about here. Okay, we'll take my tool. Now we're cutting. Here we go. This is what I do right here. This is how I set up my Santas. Depending on what kind of hat or sometimes I would have it go all the way back because he's a, a bald Santa. Let's hope this is going to, we're going to cut towards the eye, away from the nose. I don't want to put any pressure on that nose, so don't put my thumb on that nose there. I think this is a good piece that more than likely is not going to happen. It's not going to fall off, but I'm not going to take my chances. And carve this up this way, away from the nose. Now, if you listen, we got, I think they're uh, um, goldfinch chirping away. Again, away from the brow. So we just bring this up just a little bit. So I got to remember, there's my knee, it's right there. As close as I can. That's the purpose of this, is for the face. Now I'm going to take my knife and go take that chip off. Be careful I don't put any marks on the nose or much on the nose. I'm sure they're gonna it's gonna skim the nose. Same with this side. So I was as I was saying so I went back the next week and I went up one down up one side of the river brook whatever you call it dry brook and I found the tree it looked like it was all bare but the way that there was some bark that was laying there kind of parallel with it tells me that was the right tree so I'll, so I thought I'll go on the other side okay we're gonna go from the na nas na nostril we're gonna go right to the 
right to this line here. You can go right to, to this line here. And that is generally that's not going to come off, but it's going to it's going to be kind of loose. And if it's not clean, if that's not, not a clean cut, go ahead and try again. But then do remember we're coming back with round some round tools. Oh, get that out of there. So I went down the uh, the other river, the other side of the river, and. Uh, Saw a couple pieces here and there, and I I put them down. And when I come back, keep keep going down, and and then lo and behold, I hear a lot of about as far as I was going to go. But just before I got there, this is going to be a little, little tight because it's still close to the surface here. And I hear a lot of noise in the in the woods. I thought oh, it's a deer or something. And, well, the thing is, is that this river is parallel to the parallel to the trail by about about 100 yards and I thought oh it could be another kid or somebody who decided to go off the trail and a little bit and lo and behold it was a bear and this is like I said this park is sort of suburban Minneapolis so it's not that far out and and I saw it coming towards me so I thought okay I'm going to kind of walked back a little bit and um, and then it saw me and then it went up a tree and it's a little bear I thought uh oh and there's a second one if there's little bear where's mama bear so I got the heck out of there and now what I want to do is I want to take and make a cut like this so I'm gonna sort of come up like almost like an hourglass kind of a thing where are you And kind of, kind of little bridge of the nose there. And lo and behold, after about going about 40-ish yards, and there on the other was the mom bear looking right at me, no more than 10, 15 yards away. And then I saw the, the it, it looked at me, and I looked at him, her, and uh, I was getting a little nervous, and then I saw the, the baby bear got up, got to her, and went up the tree, and she turned and looked at the baby bear, and then, and uh, then she turned around and walked away. And uh, I had my camera there, and it was just enough to prove that it was a bear, because it was kind of, you know, shaky. I couldn't put the tripod down, and it kind of looked like a, one of those conspiracy videos saying, you know, there's the Martian, look, look, and you know, no, look, look, no, right there, no. But it's enough to prove that I had the bear there. Anyways, let's get back. I'm going to cut this right here. This is a, I want to call it a right triangle, I believe. Just to take a little bit off. Right triangle, just a little bit. Okay, now... I want to just kind of do a little bit of cleaning up, getting prepped for the beard here. See how that looks? Do I want to cut off some more? Uh, more than likely, no. More than likely, I'm okay with that. If I go in this direction, is that going to come a little cleaner? There. So generally, like this particular piece of bark, see this uh, horizontal crack? I think that uh, is because it's been in the water for a while and then when it dried it kind of separated a little bit. Now I want to round this a bit, or rather clean this. Leave the, the face alone a little bit there. Start getting this cleaned up. But if I go to some of the, I, I've already tried some of the pieces and it goes pretty, pretty deep. I mean, it doesn't go as deep enough. You go a little deeper and then it'll disappear. But it still adds character on the other hand. Okay. That's going to be kind of a little indented here. I'm a little nervous about that. 
so I'm going to get my V here. Come back on this side. See, this cuts much better. And like I said, I want to start committing to the hat before I get into the eyes. There's this here, and I'm going to do something a little bit like this. This is where the ball is going to be. And what you could do, I'm trying to think now, sometimes I would, if the ball is a little farther down, you know what? Let's, let's bring the ball down a little more. Oh, where are you here? He's starting to disappear here. Here, let me shift. There we go. Sorry about that. Good, you didn't miss anything if you did. And I'm going to have the ball. I don't. I don't want it to touch. No, well, because you'd have to. If you did any painting, you'd have to get in there. And then I want to put something like this in and something like this in. There we go. That's better. And we will start off with the V-Tool. Start committing to the headband, to the round ball. Oops. There we go. And if I commit to that, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Doing a stop cut. And what's going to happen is I want to get, so I want to get that tuft coming out, and I want to get the that uh, part of the hat coming sticking out. Still a little bit of a roundness to it. It's coming out. More, a lot of cleaning up to do, but a little bit more shaping here and there. And then we gotta go to the other side. I'm do this, do this, this, take this out. Save my better knife. starting to stick out. Oh, I gotta do this here, I forgot. Okay, and then round the wall a little bit. Using the better knife here. And so you could basically do this with a block of wood, or you can do, you take a block of wood, this is, uh, and you know, kind of cut it in, 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 you know, the, you take a block of wood and you cut it this way, and then the other half is this way. And you could do that, 
And the best part is if you just happen to have a nice big block of wood, but it just so happens on one side has a huge anomaly or something and it's crap, it's, well, if you cut diagonally the square, I'm trying to see, instead of it being square like this, but bring the two edges up so it comes down at an angle, then you cut and you can use some of those bad pieces of wood. Now I did, I was going to get start to clean up here a little bit. And it looks like I kind of goofed, got a little deep, but I think what I wanted to do was get a little of this going on here. With that. So we're, we're getting started. I can see that I kind of Probably go a little deeper here because I got to get a little bit of screw up there, but we can go deeper because we have to go deeper there. I can use that as on the eyebrow, or we can fix that. And all right, that's a good start. Um, one quick thing I want to do is uh, come over on this side and clean this end a little bit. I'll take that sharpness out. You have a bark that has that sharpness in there. But I'm going to leave that to, to later. I mean, and this kind of a thing. I don't want to waste your time me cleaning the back, watching me clean the back. This is the reason why we're here. So, I think it's time to get out more of the round tools and start cleaning. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Well, yeah, I do got to Here I got uh, this. This is another one of my round tools that I use for bark. Let's see if that'll get a little deeper there. That helps a little bit. Yeah, I don't want to use yeah, because this is not particularly all that sharp. But if it is, let's see if it'll round the nose. Good, it'll round the nose. Usually what you do is this end of the tool is going to go parallel with this end here, and let's see if that's gonna if that's gonna work. I think it is. This end. There, it's working. Uh, now I'm going to take a better tool. This is good to get it started. I'm going to take a better round tool and, and get it started. I'm getting started with this. Like I said, we got we got to dig deep down here. So that's what we got thus far more to come. kind of run out of run out of time and um, and so I want to while we're at home here kind of finish it up and one of the first things I want to do is get rounding rounding of the eyes uh, but I, I got my scudgier a glove on old beat up glove because this is pretty I want to say mm, it does kind of darken the gloves or really let me pull out some of these that I could be using might as well kind of have them handy here all right 
things handy here, but I want to start by, uh, let's, come here and start rounding this a little bit more. As I said, I, we ran out of time. And uh, up there, and so I'm as well do this here. And what I want to do is a little bit of this. That's why this has got to be sharp in order to pull this off. Other side. And like I said, this one of the main purposes what I'm doing here is not only I can call this officially a bark carving video, but I want to uh, um, do a face close up, Santa face close up. Uh, let's get our light in. How far can we get in without it being a problem? Move camera around a little easier here. And then, like I said, I want to come up here a little bit careful. Even though this is, should be a little, quite a bit deeper. Make sure it is. Where's my smaller number 11? Which is about a 5. And I want to get deep down there because I want to round the eyeball. This is what I want to do. All right, now how about the nose a little more? Let's pull out my, it's a larger number, number eight. Oh, geez, careful, don't do that. Hope I didn't dent it. Bring it up and then whack it and it went out of my hair, hand. I think I may have started, I may have started a little bit to rounding. You know, it's really nice being out there and doing this is kind of fun. But, you know, when it comes down to detailing, uh, there's nothing like being at home on the table here. And then uh, I'm going to do this 30 degrees this way, about 30 degrees this way, straight down. All right, and then, oops, get out of there. And start doing a little bit of this. And what I want to do is I want to kind of hopefully bulbous the nose a little bit. A little bit. By rounding this at the same time. A little bit. And then I pick up a little odds and ends as, as the years go on. And if you look at my older videos, and you're going to say, wait a minute, that's not how you do it. Well, I got to pick this up a little somewhat earlier, or later, pardon me, which I wish I did have it earlier, but you know, I'm just going to do a little bit of this. I'm just going to skirt this just a little bit. Now this is what you would do like on your cowboys and well you could probably do as wizards, maybe on some of the Santas, is it really gives us this really sharper nose. And it does come out really nice if that's what you want. Uh, okay, just doing some rounding and rounding. I want to do a little bit of this. If you can do this on your littler ones, because it does round that nose a little bit better. And I still want to take the sharpies off. Take the sharpies, anything that's sharp, off in there. Okay, now I want to leave, I probably can take this off. 
leave the note. Oh, one more thing before we <clears throat> before we leave the notes. Here's another newer one. I can't remember who, who told me this, showed me this. Was this um, either Dave Stetson or or um, Ryan Olson? I can't remember. I like to give a shout out for, but I can't remember. <laughs> At least I remember their names. Well, I got this in my hand. I just want to take this, this off of here. This sharpness. Even though it's supposed to be deeper there, but we'll we'll do that a little later. But there's a nice Santa nose. Give or take, the eyes are sockets are in there. Now, what I want to do, let's do a little bit of shaping and a little bit of cleaning and a little bit of. There, less, less moisten, hopefully. That's a little better. Okay, let's move on. I mean, once in a while I see something I don't like and I'll just do it. <sighs> Moving right along, um, I do see that, oh, I hope that isn't going to chip off. But here we got so far. And pencil. Now, what I want to do is, even though it's kind of bent a little bit, I think it's bent, is first of all, I do want to get the cheek in. Cheek is cheek inside. darker the pencil because I probably should have used a, a marker. And it depends on what kind of a mustache you want. Since we're running out of room here, uh, this would, an old world mustache would really be nice here. You come down and you know what um, I prefer to have it because we're running out of room here we'll do our happy mustache I think I've done old world before have I okay a little more adjusting here where's my big chisel there he is here and now what I want to do is I want to have this blade up this way and that blade out that way. When I, and I don't want to put any pressure on that nose. I'm putting, I don't want to lean on that nose. Now while I'm here, I might want to, I guess it's, sometimes I like to use the edge. I'll use my... My other knife on that, my bad knife on that. But this one here. On the edge there. We are off kilter again here. Same here with the mustache. I went the flat to lay flat and this the upper one to go up. Well, taking a lot of pressure on that nose.
I am hitting that nose. I hate hitting that nose. Now, when it comes to the the cheek and the mustache, it's just straight up and down. Even though the mustache is going to have to go down a little bit, but I still want that mustache. I mean, we'll work on it going down a little bit later, but. Okay, now we look at it. Now, where's my knife? Knife, please. And it is still hard as a rock here. I'm going to have to take out my... There he is. Let's see if that help. Now, again, I don't want to waste too much of your time putzing with this. I'll come back to it later. Well, here... Same with on this side here. Now this is good Minnesota bar. This is like this is Eastern Cottonwood. I come from actually darn close to St. Paul, Minneapolis area. So it shouldn't be that hard, but. I think we have harsher winters. Yes, we do. I think I could take the, the better knife here. Whereas I do believe I told you my bear story. And I wonder if she's still there. And youngsters are still there. But the philosophy understanding is Oh, I know. I take out my. I do have a cheap. I don't know if I showed you this. My cheap. These are like I got this like six dollars a, a whole. Um. A whole set of like six or something for six bucks, and they were they were not. I mean, you couldn't even bludgeon somebody to death with it, so I had to take the grinder to it, and that's why I like this. If you have a chance, this is the reason why you want to purchase these types of cheap, cheap, cheap tools. Is to do this kind of a work that you don't want to ruin your your good tools on. So same with this side, but I want to get close to that nose there. And I am really putting a lot of pressure down, so I don't want to hit that nose. It's always good to have good chunk tools. Now, there are other um, people who sell, especially Montana, and other barks, and a lot of people have purchased lots, lots of, lots of bark from other people, and they got probably better stuff. But yeah, beggars can't be chooser around here. But. In the, when it's done, it's good good bark as far as displaying. But on the other hand, why would you why would you want to carve 
when you can carve basswood. But now I need to do some shaping. I want to do this. Now this is about a 45, so I'm rounding that. And here we'll be taking a little much more of that off in there. And we are going, I did have, I did go up here, but I didn't clean it. The same thing with this mustache. I want to be careful. I don't pop that off in there. Take the knife straight down. Now this one here is almost rounded. Let's take this one. We'll take the easy one first. And the mustache is kind of, I almost want to say the word tuck underneath the cheek. I don't know if that's the best way to put it. We can begin the process of tucking under the cheek here while we're rounding this. Oops. Excuse, please. Oops, almost lost my knife. look at the face I think the face is off a little bit where's my knife this way it's off it is white breasted nut hatch o'clock Okay, now it depends on how you want to add. Do we want to add a lip? I think I might as well add a lip. This is the purpose of this, is creating a face. So I might as well give you some lip here. Now you're hoping that if you're working on bark, that when you get to some really intricate stuff, that cracks aren't landing on that. Uh, but still. Let's do a rounder too. A rounder too. When it's bigger, I'd prefer the rounder. The rounder chisel. On here. You probably, if you got a nice small round chisel on your smaller sand as you can do this. It's, it looks better. Okay, then I want to go straight down. I like that, nice and firm. Now as long as you go straight down and just, you know, go straight down. As long as you're not bending or turning or twisting while you're going down like that, you're okay. But Here's where you're going to do a little bit of turning and twisting, so it may, since you got those going at it, it's a much easier, softer, excuse me. I do like a rounder lip than a square. Now what I might want to do is, I want to create the hole deeper and more rounder because if you don't, it looks like his tongue is sticking out and like he's a lap dog lapping and I've done that. Some carvers will tell you because they like to keep the mouth shut. They 
because once you open that mouth, then you got all kinds of stuff you got to do. And that's what we got to do here is make that hole bigger. I want to erase. Oops. Sorry again. Be careful, I don't want to pry. It's very soft in there, so. But still, I don't want to pry. And I want to clean this. I still want it to come up a bit. Okay. Let's get the eye in. Let's get that going. Am I okay with how it looks somewhat kind of sort of? Okay, here, let's see if I can do this here. And now I think I might be able to do this without my visor because it's so big, I think. Get a little lead, get some eye line in there. It does seem to be off by a little bit here. Okay, so, right about here, about the nostril, give or take. From here to here to here. About, from here to here to here. About, I think I'm bringing in a little bit more. And a little bit more here. Now, he's going to be kind of a jolly-ish, instead of a... Um, Unless if you got the beard coming down and you want him to be a uh, more of a old world Santa. Okay, I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to make a regular big eye. Okay, now I can do this with my LV instead of my detailing knife. I'm going to go straight down. Where are you? Straight down. Kind of firm. Careful that nose. Same here, straight down. Firm. And just over here, as I have mentioned, that you do the right one first, or his right, if you're right-handed. Because then you can take a look at it as you're carving the second one. Now we want to give the extra oomph here. Extra oomph here. Turn it around. Extra oomph here. 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 And then let's start to take that first chip out. Make sure it's a nice clean chip. Flip it around. Nice chip here. Then I want to come up just a little bit just to clean it and then come down a lot to make sure it rounds down. Rounds down, up just a little bit, rounds down, okay, now where we got it, I'll do some, oh, 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 that came off, uh, while we're at it, we're going to take some of the Pencil marks up. Well, take that one. Well, probably could still use that, but try to 
Try to clean it as best you can. This is where you need a sharp knife and a sharp blade. So here I'm going to have to copy the second one. First one has to be copied to the second one. I see which one is first. When I, whatever. Doing some erasing, cleaning. Now, I'm going to take a small round. Not only going to take the pencil marks off, but make it a little more deeper. Taking the pencil marks off. And a little deeper. Where are we? Here we are. Okay, I'm getting there. My small, regular, or small V. I'm going to come up and then gonna come up like this. Watch this first. There, like that's how you want to come up. The second one is usually a little more difficult. I want to take my knife and do about, I almost want to say like 10 degrees back, but I can't with that as much. And then 10 degrees this way, and you just want to take that little extra sliver out. A little bit of sliver out. Sliver, which adds quite a bit of um, shadowing. Take a little bit of those boogers out of there. Okay, that's what we got so far. Now I want to take clean this a bit. I'm glad that we're going to be taking some of this off because I did do a slip there, I can see. Actually, I don't... I don't want my helvy on this. That's a sharper or more detail, some medium detail to detail. This is more of my, I want to say, rough out knife. And do an undercut. I, I'm kind of premature on the undercut here because we still got some forehead to do here. Okay, because what we want to do, let me just do a little bit of this. Kind of get that started. Let me clean this up and I'll show you. So people are seeing is that I'm carved too fast. And I'm trying to get a well this one here would be like probably only a day's worth into like probably about a two hour video. There we are. Where's my pencil? Shouldn't have pushed it this way. Should I keep pushing it that way. I want to do something like this. Now, in the old days, I used to do it with a a round tool, but I've been doing it. I think it's much quicker with a, a knife. And you're going in towards the center, and then you go right here to kind of raise the nose up a little bit, and then 
right here to now it basically I, I rarely has it popped out on its own but it's at least enough that when it pops like this and you know what's what's happening and you can keep working with it and coaxing it and There we go. Careful about lifting when it comes to bark. All right, there we go. Now he's got this kind of, I don't say angry look, but kind of looking, kind of thinking looking. I want to cut just a little bit of this off. So it somewhat rounds. So he's not angry. He could be looking at something or he could studying something or you can be angry if you want all right and then we're going to round this back and so i can continue on doing undercut my cylinder. Same here. up now I want to shape this a little more come over on this side too to keep the rounding process now he looks you can do some shaping uh, one of the things I do is just bring this up just a little bit to set an angle just set an angle like this a little bit, just a little bit. When you bring a little bit, he becomes less angry. Oh, be careful. Remember the last time I did that's when I cracked it, I think. And he's he's pretty... <coughs> like I said, he's kind of thinking. You could uh, bring it down a little bit. But usually, the reason why I want this thing kind of large is because we're going to put him some nice bushies. Oh, there's going to be a lot of picking and a lot of cleaning here, but I don't want to waste your time. I really don't want to waste your time. So let's put the bushes in now so we can leave it. Make sure I'm not on the nose. And nice push. <coughs> <coughs> oh, boy, some of that dust got in. So it's kind of really bushy, really bushy. All right, let's continue on with the beard, the beard, and I think I want to take a little bit more off. Not all the way down, let's open this up. <coughs> oh, excuse me, whoa, some got in there, I guess, which is not good because some people are not happy with the with bark but I'm okay with it all 
All right, and so I want to begin with, well, first I want to kind of do this first. I want to, I'm going to have to put my hand, a lot of energy in this, so just to get this, these wedgies out here. And another cleaning up I have to do. I'm going to take my bad chisel again. Where's my bad chisel? Start putting in some, some beard. Get some beard started. Oops, careful. I'll take that mustache off. And the You can either hey, leave it at that. Leave it at that. We'll go to the next level. Too bad I don't have a bad V. But I'm not going to go too... I can go here. Maybe here. See, the idea make it really artful is to go past the bark. Yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm definitely gonna have to um, sharpen this so when it's done. I think I'm gonna kinda stay close to home here. with on this side here. Okay, we're looking good. That's as far as I want to go here. You can get into more detail uh, with the with the beard as you want. But we still have the I think this will help. After I've done it all, I've got that buried somewhere. I guess I don't have it. I have a sharpening block. Well, I guess I don't have it handy. Well, and this time I'm going to go a little bit like this. Other times I, I go all the way through like this. But once in a while, like I said, for the sake of doing something different, Sometimes it isn't. But something just gets right in the right in that voice box there. So I'll just keep carving here. While I work that out.
pumps. Uh -huh. I'll come back this way. Even it a bit. Be careful, it's in the sweep half my tools will go flying. Now again, there is a lot of picking that I ain't like I said, I ain't gonna waste too much of your time with the picking, but what I do, what I want to do is I want to, now what I would do with all my basswood, this one, let's see if it works, is I want to put this, um, I call it a little shadow, see how that, that comes out, the, uh, see how that rounds out there, see I like that, and it brings the head, out. And same with this side here. Also the shadow plus it cleans it up. Flip it over. would clean this out. I think it's going to be okay if I did. Hello. <coughs> now I got one of those. Oops. Careful I don't flick. I'll pry. I think I want to have a little bit here just for the sake of Getting up to the lip. Be careful. I mean, for, when I was doing this before, I was very hard on it. I might do a while I'm a smaller tool. I certainly don't want to get down too deep here. Okay, now I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with everything on the face. Oh, one more thing. I'm getting the face is getting kind of done. I want to work a little bit more on the top here. Get some more of that top coming out. But I want to do this. So because I didn't mention I was going to do this, and that's going to be pretty deep right here. I also wanted to mention, where's my other thing here? I think I can get in there now that I've opened that. I want to give that the impression that it is going down. As best we can under the situation of this material. So there's all kinds of pickings and same here if you want to Sharpen this a bit. Oops. Oh, another thing too. Uh, what I did was I used my knife <coughs> to do the under. Probably a little more. Or you can take your round tools. Where is I going to see this one here? And you can use this, be careful, careful, and then you'll go in to really bring up that. And then I want to make sure you go down. I'll 
Okay. You could do a couple more cuts and make them like an older, older gentleman. No, let's kind of let's do that. Where is my smaller? My. Hello. Where'd you go? Well, I got my docker here. Or my one at docker. No, here. Is this it? There you go. He's calling. I'm over here. I might do an extra one of these. Or two. For the age. And I think you, you might want to, you would definitely want to age him because uh, he is, he comes from, not only Santa, but he comes from wood. So he's, you know, like I said, you can make a wizard like this. Uh, I mean, the face is all the same here. And then maybe what you do here down here, but um, different, you might have a different mustache and you won't have the Santa hat, but you want to age him like he's got a lot of age and wisdom and so on. I'm going to leave that and I am going to go to the hat. Now the hat, I want to round a little bit here. And I want to come down just a little bit. And then I want to round it just a little bit. Same with on this side, except what's going to happen is I think I'm going to, I'm going to have to, I want to get a little deeper here. At least it's put in. A lot of times I just kind of get things started and then I'll go deeper later or perfect later. I just want to put it in and see how it looks. And if it doesn't, let's go deeper here. Oh, where are you? There you are. Where'd you just spit to? Deeper here. And with that, I'm going to bring this a bit deeper. I still want it a little bit rounder. What you also could do, <coughs> practice on a piece, maybe maybe even about this big or a little smaller or even bigger if you want, and, and do the same thing on a... I think it did I mention that on a basswood that you cut down the center yeah I think I did I don't have a block here do I too bad I don't have a block but it's like you know so instead of it like this oh, that's kind of straight you come down like this and then there's the other it comes down like that and down the center I think you may have seen that in a lot of uh, carving magazine books and books and making ornaments that way but probably the same thing and you can make it look and it's really interesting there are out there there are people who are making gnome houses out of basswood you know if you like to do a gnome house and uh, you don't have the the bark because you simply cut that at an angle and you can do this standing up or a bark, put it on the wall, even paint it, rough up the end. The other direction, instead of me having to clean up this end, it's rough it and paint it and pretend that it's a bark. For all you people who can't get bark, simulation bark. Maybe I should try one of something like that. I don't even think about that. Why didn't I think of that before? As a matter of fact, right now, our Metro Wood Carving Weekend, look it up at scottcarvings.com in under class, uh, especially if this is an older video, you know, we still are going. 
And uh, but this this year we got uh, Lee Olson is doing an imitation. Uh, it's either de uh, moose or elk antler. And you know, you take a moose antler and, and uh, carve something on it. Well, here, instead of the whole antlers, he's got a nice board and cut out a lot and make it look like it's an antler. And then you're going to have a scene in there. So if you can't get what you want, you can take some basswood and make it look like it. Now, I'll round this a bit. Here, here's what I want to do. I don't want to take my good round, smaller round chisels when it comes to, you know, denting. I'm just going to dent it. So I'm going with the tufts here. I'm just denting it. Putting some dent. Because it's going to be painted white. And that's just basically... I mean, all that's left is pickings and... Um, he probably would like to have, let's do a, an undercut here too. Let's do that like we did under the hat. Sand her up. Sand her up. <laughs> and that's about as far as I'm going to go. That's about as fur as we can go. Uh, maybe let's do a little more undercut on, on the ball here then. Why not? Bring that ball out more. I didn't even think of that till just now. Why not? Undercut up here. Come on. There we go. I'm glad I spent a little more time doing that. <sighs> Can I get this any cleaner? <clears throat> no, I made it dirtier. So there we are. I mean, that's as far as I'm, other than picking. Here and again, if there's anything else that needs to be done, uh, one eye seems to be whiter than the other, that's usually 
par for the course. In the back, I all you do is just oh goodness, where's my this is this is actually what I should have done in, in the beginning. Because you know, now I got but but I pay no attention to this now. I think I did mention that. Is you just take all this off. But again, I didn't want to waste your time with this kind of stuff. But there it is. We're ending it here. Let's end it here. Before I keep grabbing something else. And, oh, I forgot this. Oh, I forgot to put glasses on him. Oh, I forgot. Let me put up some black glasses. That'd be interesting. And see, when I go like this, you see how that that undercutting adds some shade and it brings it around. I like that shade. Right at his tass tassel there if I go like this. Yeah, see, look at that. Now if I go like that, then you can see it, but you look kind of straight on that shade. Like it's lifted. Like it's, you carved that separate and you glued that on there. I mean, it's separate. It's same with the hat. And same with the side of the hat, side of the hat. Let me go a little bit this way for the right, for the, for this side here. I like that nice shade. But there you go. Uh, oh, one more thing I did. One, one, one more thing. Everything I just can't even get get out of here. Oh, I did do that, did I? I did this. Oh, I did do that. Okay, no, no, I'm sorry. Or maybe I did it to one and didn't do it to the other. I mean, straight down and then come up. All right, now I'm done. <gasps> Anything else? Pickens here and there.